Hi folks, I'm Steve Butler. Have you been looking for that perfect wedding gift or housewarming gift? Or perhaps just that accent for your dining room table? Well, look no more. Today we're building these great tea lights. Come see how we do it here in the garage. Let's have a look at our project. These small tea lights, they make a great impact on the dining room table. And let me tell you why. First of all, they're made out of mahogany, a really nice wood. We're using half inch thick stock. We're gonna mill it down. And we're using aluminum channel for the base. And the base fits into a rabbit that we'll cut on the bottom. And on the top, we're using some perforated stainless steel metal and it fits in a rabbit as well. What I've done, I've just taken a Forstner bit afterwards, once our aluminum channels cut the size, our base, and I've just made a little indent, and that just helps the tea light nestle in there. And when this is all together and lit, the lights are out, they're on the dining room table, it really illuminates. It's almost like an old dance ball on the ceiling. A lot of light goes there. Now, the cool thing about this design, if you wanted to, you can stack them. And the tea light is encased in its own little socket so you don't have to worry about the, the candle hitting the wood or anything like that. Okay, the first thing we need to do is go dress up our mahogany stock. Our tea lights are made out of mahogany so we're going to use the same stock for our project today. And this I've had sitting around the shop. It's already been dressed and milled, but it's still susceptible to the elements in the shop and it can move on you, warp a little. So we still need to clean up a face, which is the first part of um, dressing up your lumber. And then we'll take it to the planer and thickness it down the size. We also need to clean up an edge so we can use that edge to, as reference against the table saw fence and cut uh, a parallel strip. Now, I'm working in a sh small shop. If you have limited shop space, these six inch bench top joiners are perfect. I have a small shop dust collection system and together it's perfect for in this shop. Now what I did is I attached it to a piece of plywood, three quarter inch plywood, bolted it down and I just clamped it to the bench. But before I did that, um, this bench top's a little slick. I have a little piece of rubber mat I just stuck under there and it just helps secure it. So the first thing though, I want to have a look and there was, you know, there's a little slight cup in here, just meaning like that. So I'm just going to pick a face. And now mahogany, you don't want to use just a regular leaded pencil. Your lines can get lost or blurred in the mahogany. So grab a piece of chalk or a white pencil crayon, colored pencil. So I'm just going to put a mark on there. And that tells me which face I want down. Now, I just drew a little sample here. We want cup down. And the reason for that is, first of all, if you put cup up, it's going to rock on you and you're going to have problems controlling this board on the joiner, as well as you end up cutting off more material than necessary. If you put cup down, it sits on the, the, the top, on the table, the joiner table, the joiner bed better, and you're also cutting away less material. So, going to fire up the dust collection, we're going to clean up that face, and then we're going to put it through the, the planer and bring it down to a half inch thickness.
Yeah, I've made a bunch of these. These are my go-to pieces for, for wedding gifts. And what I've done in the past, which is really cool you can do, is I've taken the bases to a jeweler and I've had them engrave the name of the bride and groom and obviously the date of their wedding on the sides and it just makes them really unique for them or individualizes them for that couple. It's really awesome. Okay, we've dressed up our mahogany boards. We've cut them to three and a half inches by 15 inches and they're half inch thick. Let's look at the anatomy of our tea light base here. We're using mahogany. You can use any wood you prefer. Uh, mahogany machines nicely and when oiled up it's a really nice looking wood. We have four pieces all the same dimension. We cut them on a miter and glue them up and there's a, a rabbit that I've put in the top and bottom to accommodate the base and that perforated metal and the perforated metal emits the light. Like I said earlier it hits the ceiling it looks really nice but also what I did is I cut a series of grooves and dados. Some are cut at the same dimension and then I move the fence over and I cut, I cut them at a different dimension, front and back, or face and back. And what that does is, some it just cuts a groove right through, and others it ends up overlapping and cutting these perforations, and that lets the light go through. And believe it or not, uh, I've used them outside, and the wind doesn't even blow them out. But on a table, it looks really nice, especially around the dinner table. So what I'm going to do is I've made up a series of jigs here and this took a little bit of time but it's really not that complicated don't be afraid to give it a try and I just uh, basically it's a sled and gives me control to cut a series of dados and grooves and I put my board in and you don't want it super super tight you don't want it too sloppy where you, it's your cuts aren't going to align but you want to be able to get this out and it fits in I've set my fence at a certain dimension and I'm going to run a groove down. I'm then going to move the fence over and run another groove. I'm going to use my cross cut fence, leaving this fence the same, run a dado, move it over, run a dado. So we're making a bunch of crisscrosses essentially. And then I'm going to have one face cut. What I'm then going to do is put that in my second jig and do the same thing just at a different dimension and that's how we get all those perforations. I have a third jig and I use that to help guide my board and cut it on a 45 to cut the miter. Then what we do is we cross cut them all to the same size and glue them up and that's essentially it. I'll explain a little further as we go along. Okay, that's looking great. You can see what I did. My first cut made the groove. I put my miter gauge on, made a dado cut at that same dimension. I didn't touch the fence or adjust it at all. Turned the board in for in with my miter gauge, made another cut so you have one at the top and bottom. I've set my fence now at three and three eighths and I'm just going to do exactly the same thing. All right, looking good. So now what I'm going to do, I'm not going to cut any more grooves. I'm going to use my miter gauge fence and just continue to make a series of dados. All right, that looks great. That's it for our first jig. What I'm going to do is pop this out, turn it over, put it in our second jig, and essentially do the same thing.
That looks great. Now the mahogany is soft enough, you don't get a lot of tear out, but you just want to take your time. You don't want to go too fast or you'll get a lot of tear out. If you go too slow, it can burn. So just a nice steady pace. I'm going to pop this one out and then we're going to use our second jig. I really enjoy making jigs for project. I mean, the project itself is rather simple. The joinery is not over complicated, um, but the, you know, you need to spend some time thinking about and making these jigs. And once you have them, that's it. You can run off a batch of these and make a production run out of them. There you go. You can see by running a groove on the other face, um, it opened up some of these parts. We now have these perforations. So I'm just going to go ahead and do set our fence over and continue to make some cross cuts in another groove um, and get this done. That looks great. Now what I'm going to do is use our third jig. I'm going to switch the blades. I'm going to take the stacked dado blades out, put a regular saw blade in there. We're going to tilt at the 45 degrees and cut our bevel along the edges of our stock. It came about, it was a project in school. When I was in college, one of the professors had us do a, a project. We worked in groups first. There was three or four of us together and we had to design a small project that was perfect for gift shops. I mean, if you aspire to be a professional furniture maker and make your living off of it, um, you need to do something with your smaller pieces, create smaller wares for gift shops and things like that. And that's how it came about. So the premise of the project was to, to create these jigs that um, would help with the production of the end piece. So it was a two-part project, really. So, and I really liked how it turned out. Taken out our stacked dado set and replaced it with a combination blade. We've tilted it to 45 degrees. Now, this one, my saw, the blade tilts into the saw fence. So I've put the fence on the other side of the blade. You want it, your piece to fall away from the blade. You don't want it to get trapped and wedged. It can come back on you. Our stock looks great. We've cut all the perforations, all the grooves and the dados to get those. And I'm just sitting it in this jig. It acts as a cradle and we're going to cut a 45 degree miter right down both edges. You can see, and that's how we join our tea light. Okay. That looks good. We have a little burning there. We'll just clean that up, a little sanding. Not too much though. We don't want to break these miters. Just going to turn this, put the other edge there, make sure that's flush up against the fence. And we're just going to go ahead and do that other edge and then we'll do our other stock. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is we need to cut our four pieces. They're at three and a half inches long. I've just set up my chop saw. I'm just going to take a measure, cut one, move it over, and take another measure because I just want to make sure that all the parts are lined up properly. And then what we're going to do is go back to the table saw and we're carefully just going to cut that rabbit on the top and bottom and that's where our aluminum base and our perforated metal top will sit.
That looks great. I'm just going to go ahead and do it to the other piece of stock. If you wanted to, you could set up your miter gauge fence with a stop block on the table saw. It doesn't matter. There's many ways to, to do this. Yeah, it's a nice little project. It's a great way to utilize your offcuts. And uh, we're using half an inch thick wood. I mean, these ones we made on a mahogany, but you can use any material you want. I have all my pieces cut to size. Now the next thing we have to do is cut this rabbit on the top and bottom of our base. And what I did, I have my wooden auxiliary fence here on the table saw fence, and I put this quarter inch piece of plywood down. I lowered the blade, turned the saw on, and I raised it up just till it came through. And why I did that is your table saw insert, there's some gaps in there, and I don't want this piece to rock on it at all. It's a little unsafe. So this ensures me a steady platform for it so it'll go smoothly without any dips. And I've raised the blade to the depth of my rabbit I want, which in this case is quarter of an inch. And my blade is an eighth of an inch wide. So I'm going to make one pass, move my fence over, and make a second pass and do it on both ends of our pieces. And again, I have a wooden fence on here, an auxiliary fence, and I've buried it just slightly. Okay. That looks great. We're just going to go over to the bench now and glue these up. Okay, we're ready to do our glue up. I have a piece of plywood down here to give me a nice flat surface and I've laid out my pieces and what I did is I took some masking tape and on the miters I just added some tape there and that creates a hinge and it just helps me glue these up. I'm going to throw some glue in the miter joints, fold these up because of the tape on I can do that and then I'm just going to put these elastic bands and they're going to act as our clamp and apply that pressure. You don't need a lot of glue. You don't, I mean, you need enough to do the job, but too much and you're gonna have a lot of cleanup to do in these small um, crevices. go. Now if you have to make any adjustments, now is the time to do it. And if for some reason the pieces aren't the exact same length, you want to make sure that these two pieces that meet are lined up and we can take these to a sander later on and just clean that up. Make them level. That looks great. We're just going to let these dry and while they're drying, we're going to go ahead and cut the aluminum channel for our base and the perforated metal that fits in the rabbit joints. Now I'm using this quarter inch perforated metal steel for the top. Um, you can use anything you want. You don't want it solid though because those little tea lights, even though you know they're encased in this aluminum holder, they do emit a fair amount of heat. So. And just be careful what you use. 
this, I ordered this, but you can buy similar products at any home center. So what I did, I'm just, I measured over three inches. That's the inside dimensions um, from our rabbit joint. Took my Sharpie. Now this twist a little bit. I'm using a pair of uh, metal snips to cut this. You can use a hacksaw um, if you have a, a metal break or a, a bandsaw for metal. Um, use, you can use that. Um, this bends up on me a bit. I then just take a, a rubber mallet and a, a block of wood and I just flatten it. So we're just gonna start this. At first it's a little tough to get going. And you want to cut these oversize. I mean, unless, you, unless you're really, really accurate at this. I cut them oversize and then I take a grinder or a file and I just uh, clean them up. That looks great. Again, I cut them oversized. These edges are sharp. I'm just going to take a file and smooth those down and get it so that it fits in nicely to that top rabbit. Now, what we have to do is cut our aluminum channel to three inches as well. This is a three inch wide channel that I ordered. I'm going to cut it to three inches long and then we're just going to clean that up. The same, same thing, the edges are going to be sharp, so we'll clean those up so it fits in that rabbited base. Now, I have a, a triple grind saw blade here and this one's just for aluminum. I use it. It's great for cutting the non-ferrous metals. Um, you know, you can use it with a regular saw blade, but the aluminum heats up and sometimes can gum up the blade. All right, let's start cutting that. Yeah, this is a, I mean, the dimensions of this is just something I came up with. You don't necessarily have to do them. You can make them wider, taller, um, whatever you like. Use different materials. I've used uh, pieces of hardwood, some tropical hardwood that was really dense and didn't move as much. I've used that for the base before in the past as well. So, I mean, there's many variations. It's entirely up to you. Okay, that looks really nice. Now I'm just going to go to the belt sander or I can use a file and just clean up that rough edge. I mean, I took this to the table saw, but you can use a hacksaw to cut this channel as well as the perforated steel that we were using. Another thing now I'm going to do is I'm going to take a Forstner bit. This one's an inch and a half in diameter and that's the diameter of this tea light. And we're not going to drill all the way through. We're just going to make a little shallow divot, for lack of better words, for that light to nestle in there. Okay, let's go ahead and do that. Okay, that looks great. Our edges are nice and smooth. I've buffed up the, the aluminum and you can see that little divot I put in there if the Forstner bit is just enough to securely hold that tea light in place. Our perforated metal, the edges are, are dulled. We took a file and smoothed those down and they're going to fit in the rabbits. Now, about finishing, I like to put an oil finish on these and you want to give enough time to have them dry thoroughly. You are putting an open flame on there and it just really makes this mahogany pop really nice, the grain in it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little oil into this baking pan here. Um, you can brush it on but I prefer to just pour some in there and then what I do is I'll just dip these in until that face and the inside face gets covered. Just turn it around, turn it around and put it aside to dry. Let's go ahead and do that. They're not complicated to make, but the first time trying them, you might want to try a lesser value wood, maybe a few pieces of pine or something, because if you just have your dimensions slightly off, it doesn't leave a lot of meat of wood left and it can easily snap. For instance, when I was, you know, making the second series of dados and grooves cut, it was just slightly off and you can see what happened. When I took it out of the jig, it just snapped apart on me. So that's what I do normally at first. I'll use a piece of pine, I'll dimension it to fit in my jigs and uh, we'll start from there. We'll try one out and we'll work out all the measurements. Even, even having done it before, I have to reacquaint myself with that. That looks great. Let's see how this comes together. Okay. Well, I know I definitely have a place for these around our house. I had a lot of fun making this project with you. I hope you come back and see us again here in the garage. Silly 
wab it. <laughs> I forgot it was in there. 